Got it. So thanks, Mike, for inviting us to talk to you today. I think we have some interesting synergies in the work we're doing from different perspectives. Definitely, definitely. Uh, really nice to talk to you. And like I said before, I've been watching your work off and on for the last few years. So it's been fun to see some of the topics that you've taken up recently because they're overlapping with things I've been doing for the last year, especially the work on the on the trees. So it's fun, uh, as I just said, um, to see this show up on your radar, considering how deep you've gone into research over these last years on so many different topics that that this massive puzzle piece is just just now kind of shown up on your radar, I think is it's fun to watch you go through this process of waking up to it and incorporating it into what you've already been doing and, and your understanding of how this fits into the realm and, and what's going on here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it definitely takes it to a much deeper level. And I totally have Chad to thank for me coming into this awareness. Uh, I was noticing the mesas and plateaus and things and just around where I live. And I, I'm, I'm looking at it like, okay, I'm thinking of it as a man-made structure and didn't feel like it was what they told us, which was all the product product of geological and natural forces creating mm. what we see. But once that piece came into focus from with Chad's help, it became crystal clear. And the challenge is communicating that to the general public so they see it too. And some already do. Some are already there. And the people did- that that watch watch our work um, seem to already be there. A lot of them are. And and what happened was Chad's finding these things and I saw a couple of his videos and I'm watching and I'm thinking, well, we're doing this differently, but we're finding the same things. Hmm. And And Chad, if you can talk a little bit about your process when you were coming into awareness of all of this. Yeah, so, so firstly, you know, people like Mike and and he was speaking before about Hangman and there's all these these great people out there that came to this a long time ago, you know. So first off, hats to hats to everybody else. Um, hats off to everybody else. My awareness came to it after literally sitting under a tree and, and connecting to it. Literally, it sounds silly, but like a Buddha, a, a Buddha enlightenment type of scenario. So I come to it more from a spiritual point of view. I was chasing God for 10 years, if you like. So when the awakening or the awakening happened, um, it was happened under a tree. And then from that moment, it seemed that I was connected to these, to, to, to the trees, to the grid. Information just started flowing freely. I started to see things differently, but it came so fast. It was just with everything. So it wasn't just with the trees. It was with words. It was with symbols. It seemed to be, you know, the film they live when you get the goggles and you put them on. That that So that was my my coming to it. Um, but the evidence side of it took a... Took when, a when, was, when was the epiphany? Um, 2020. The, the jackpot was a, the mm. explosion one. Obviously, we have small awakenings throughout, don't we? But the the, the jackpot one was 2020. That's where everything changed. Mm. My 30th birthday, around my 30th birthday. And so it's been three years from that moment to now. <laughs> Literally, as soon as it happened, everything... It, the message was to spread, to spread the message and to, to almost be... Um, a shepherd for sheep, that was the exact words. So the only thing that I could say that I'm adding to this at all is showing different ways of presenting my, what you and all, all, all other people have already presented, already know about. It's just a different type of idea um, coming in maybe from, you know, I like to incorporate a lot of fantasy and a lot of movies because I believe there's a lot of fact in our myths and legend and movies. So, and I understand that the average person knows that they can associate to that. So if you can associate to what they already know and bring truth and light into that, it's going to work naturally. So um, if anything, all that I'm doing is probably re-explaining what people have already been trying to show for, for a long time. So 
I appreciate the ones before <laughs> that have that have shouted from the rooms about this. <laughs> yeah, the movies are are kind of how they hide it from us also because they convince us that it was myth and fairy tale and and allegory and and instead of like a concrete reality that you can go out and touch. It's like flipping it on its head, isn't it? You know, um, the way I see it, they they use these. It's just reversing it. It's like everything they do is in inversion. So it's almost just reversing and showing the truth in what they're showing as fantasy, as you're saying. Right. Hmm. And the inversion is, is such a big problem um, because the forces that have been high behind what's taken place here have you know, basically usurped so many words for good and just flipped it. So even when you talk about light, people are like, what light are you talking about? And, and probably the same thing with the rainbow. <laughs> you know, the rainbow is a covenant with God versus, you know, the inclusive society woke thing that's happening, been happening, you know, so so that word confusion is is definitely an issue and um we were since we were talking a little bit before we started recording um chad's excellent at breaking down words of any kind and tremendous you know being able <laughs> to to pull meanings out of it hidden meanings that wouldn't necessarily be obvious um and he did that worth words that contain the word tree or some version of tree in it and so so chad uh, i know you had some great examples in our last conversation on the giant trees earth the earth's grid and the new world order and then mike i think you had some things to add to that yeah from an, a word etymology perspective definitely we can maybe you can go over some of the ones that you that you shared i, I watched uh, a couple of your videos i, I love you know your editing is beautiful for for somebody who's who's uh new to this you're doing beautiful beautiful work um and uh yeah you were breaking down some some of the words in, in an interesting fashion i watched one video of your vacation to tenerife which is also interesting because as you noted in the video it's got the word tree in it <laughs> Mm -hmm. and uh could very well be a giant tree and and that's something we should definitely go into um some depth with a little bit later is that connection between volcanoes and trees because there's a lot there to unpack um but go through some of the some of the wordsmith <laughs> yeah so i think the tenere video what did we have in there michelle so it was just literally the flipping of letters so to start with, um, you know, I think it's vowels um, that they, they easily they flip the vowels to hide. They can flip letters. Um, so one of the things I do, my mind actually does it. It'll just flip the letter. So we we kind of saw um, a, a natural F in T. If you look at a lowercase T and you were to rotate it and flip it, it naturally becomes a T. So... Hmm um when we did that when i did that me and michelle were talking about that free came up and it was free energy tree you know in tenerife i saw tree and knife but the kind of i was already thinking it was such a huge mother tree the the the, the island was itself it could have easily been uh referenced as as like a tree of life as such so um there was an easy change and a switch of letters with knife to life and obviously it was missing the k just the n-i-f-e um streaked contains a tree uh you know and especially when we look at um the way streets are laid out comparing that to a root system and root as a homophone is also spelled with the double o or the o u you know the root is in Roots as or as in roots versus roots, tree roots. You've got the roots which cars drive on and which we we cross land upon, and then the roots of a tree. So, um, me and, and when Michelle, you cut, when you cut a tree down, it's a pretty big reset. Reset. Another one. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's also yeah. got tree in it. It's a word we've heard a lot in the last few years, haven't we? Um, trespass yeah. was another one you found. Trespassing. Trespassing. Yeah. And Our then what, 
And then wasn't there a popular song that seemed to be talking about Haida and what happened? Oh, it was the Brian May one, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Brian May went to went to Tenerife because there's because of the um the observatory there. He's big into science, isn't he, Brian May? It was in the 70s, I'm sure it was. And he it inspired a song, Mother. So, it's not called Mother, Mother Tie Me Down or Tie Me Down, the name of the song is. And it was talking about uh like tying the mother down or cutting her down or um obviously we referenced it to the tree. <laughs> You were talking about roots and and entry is another one, mm. and uh, and ants from Lord of the Rings, which were giant walking trees. And so, if you think about the root structures of the trees, there's your entry into the underworld. And you were also talking about golf courses, and um, we can get into some other other things that are related to to that but that you know two ball cane you've got the you've got the um the golf club mm -hmm. and then you have you have the hole and then when you get the ball in the hole what do they do they pull they pull the pole out you didn't you you mentioned you were talking about the connection between golf but you didn't mention that in your video that that's actually like at the moment when the ball is going in the hole mm -hmm. the tree is removed right mm -hmm. so if that's their goal else to remove, that bit. if that's their goal to remove the trees you know then then golf is a pretty interesting you know because mm. and there's a lot uh with i think you even mentioned that a lot of golf courses have underground tunnel systems uh you might you might have mentioned that maybe i'm misremembering but yeah definitely um, definitely so a friend of mine, Victor Bouguet, um, he had a channel that was taken down a, a couple of years back. Um, and he he noted the connection between golf courses, cement factories, specifically Semex, uh, which is the biggest. And they're wow. very, very often right next to golf courses in in you know high percentages, star forts are there as well and uh tunneling systems and so he was hypothesizing that that there's trafficking also involved definitely, definitely. um so yeah. and and of course who's using the golf courses primarily the elite does that have yeah. a tree in it e-l-i-t-e -E. it has no it doesn't have an r <laughs> but um yeah in in our email exchange Michelle, I um, I mentioned Santorini, and I asked if you looked into that at all. I visited that back in 2000, 2000. Incredible place. And um, San Santorini, it, it kind of comes up in a couple of, of contexts. One is Atlantis, and um, another is the tsunami or whatever that took place after it exploded that wiped out the Minoan Empire it, in a day. <laughs> you know, and so those are the kinds of things that I've I was aware of. Um so so yes, I'm I'm familiar with the location in that respect. Have you looked on it uh, at at Google Earth or looked at Google Earth? Not at there. The, yeah, at the not, island. Not there specifically. Um <laughs> With it's the... it's basically one of these islands that's got a big body of water in the middle, and then there's a new volcanic um, cap that's coming up out of the water again. So it blew its top, sent tsunamis across the Mediterranean, wiped out you know Nos is it Gnosis the the palace and and the empire the Minoan Empire on Crete to the south of it I believe, um, and it's it looks so much like a tree but it's interesting san torini tor thor tor toroid so that's another way of saying tree essentially hey, guys so, i've just just been looking at the word sorry to interrupt but you know how i do the change of vowel and i was just looking at it and you said it as i looked at it because in <laughs> santorini you've got the two eyes so i changed the two eyes for two e's 
and then you get tree appear in right. the night. Yeah, the eye, had, the eye is an E sound also. Yes. Yeah, so and then you, you got had tree there as well. It goes you had Sandler. That, so I, I changed the S for a city and it said can. And then you said about popping off like a volcano. And I thought about the can opening, you know, a can opening. So, but the, yeah. it, just interesting how I literally, how you had literally, how you said about the pop. <laughs> I changed the S to a C and it was like can tree, tree can. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. So, Sorry to so tour is, you know, when you think of the, the, um, the Norse mythology of the world tree that's at the, you know, the center of creation and, you know, who's what you've got Odin and then you've got Tor and, and then we have toroid, which is that, that cycling, you know, magnetic shape. And that's your, your, your trunk, your branches, your root structure. It's, it's all in the Tor as well. Um, the, the original Greek name for Santorina was Tira. Um, it also, uh, spelled with it's T H I R A. So there's your tree again. Right. Um, but it's also T E T H E R A is the older, um, meaning. And I was looking that up in Tiros, which is the, the Greek means hot and fiery, which makes sense for a volcano, but it's also linked to Teresa, uh, which is means harvester and reaper. <laughs> So there's your there's your cutting down again. So there's all of these all these things that are just woven into these these basic names of these these places. Um yeah. Wow. See if I had any anything else from the as far as a word perspective. You were mentioning mentioning the, the chiro, and I don't recall what you were talking about, Michelle. Um it's just the symbol, the, the symbol of um the cross. Uh -huh. So it's like a something crossed and then hmm something going up the middle and a lot and of then, times it has a and then the p has a p uh, so it, it looks like a p yeah. through an x yeah and so it, you can see that as a three-dimensional symbol also so you have an axis which would be the tree trunk and then you have the tree roots going out and then the p portion at the top is the canopy canopy <laughs> i just <laughs> realized that um yeah. so that that's that's an interesting one and and uh Chiro, I'm a chiropractor. I don't know if I mentioned that. That's that's my profession. I'm a chiropractor. So Chiro also means by hand. Um and uh yeah, so the spine, that's our tree, right? <laughs> With our 33 vertebra. And um yeah, it's I don't know, it just everything seems to overlap and intertwine. It's it's fascinating the way the way it all fits together um tunneling systems so how what do you think about this this volcano tree connection uh, absolutely you know there's no doubt in my mind at this point um that's how they hide the reality <laughs> that there were giant trees is they don't look like them anymore so they can get away with calling them volcanoes and and whatnot and what really brought me in further was in following chad's work was realizing that i was encountering these volcanic islands along the grid lines that i found and then that just brought in a whole new aspect to it because if you look at overseas colonies of you know now the european union but historically Britain, France, the Netherlands, um, off the top of my head, Spain, going after these former trees, former giant trees. I mean, like they wanted them and they still want them. They're still fighting over them. And so there's some, definitely some kind of energy source or power source associated with those giant trees that they they want as part of their nation building or or whatever and i want to go well, back are... go, ahead. go ahead i'm sorry no you go go ahead no i was just going to revisit golf courses really quickly because they're also known as links mm -hmm. yeah. and i think that's what they were these these mounds were linking something in this in the original free energy grid system 
Not that yeah, they didn't have the other big purposes. understandings over the last few years is people have really dug in with lots of alternative research is you've got the dumbs, you've got all of these under underground tunneling systems everywhere, it seems. <laughs> and uh, I think there's a whole lot more going on underground and we are, we can even begin to be aware of. And, and it, it would not surprise me at all if these, these tunneling systems that are linking everything together were the original root structures of the trees and maybe they've they've mined them they've they've taken out all that material and and that's why these you know the trees are so valuable they're making everything the trees are producing all of our our precious uh metals and and gemstones and they're making it all that's one thing hangman's work has really shown me unequivocally is that that's where this stuff is coming from <laughs> you know that that's fueling the realm and since the reset anyway they've been mining the heck out of all of that <laughs> you know they've just been tearing the earth up getting to it can you give me like a reader's digest version of the, of your take on the grid system and, and what that means to you yes I, I can do that and then um i'll turn the baton over to chad because i know you've been doing some work on underground bases and things like that recently right yeah so um as far as my work i believe that the ancients built everything out along the lines of sacred geometry so the earth's grid system everything was precisely placed on the earth they knew who they were they knew where they were they knew why they were here there wasn't any argument about the shape of the earth about our reason for being um, which I believe was reconnecting with our higher selves. So humanity was here doing, I believe this civilization was harmonious and balanced and that um, there were different empires, but they weren't fighting each other like we've been told. Um, so they may have the same names that we've been, that have passed down, but uh, just a completely different story because that's what I've found in following alignments all over the earth so like um where you live in spain mike i i wouldn't even have ever heard of that except that i i passed right through there following uh, an alignment from washington dc and it was a circle alignment and i've learned so much hidden history from from tracking these cities and places in alignment long distance primarily and um and so I feel like this was a harmonious, balanced society that was in unity consciousness, different expressions of of the same thing, but not, not at odds. It's like there was a main template and and they had their own expression. So there's a castle. I want to say it's called Leeds Castle, but it's not in Leeds. I think it's in Kent. And it's got a star fort base. And it's in the middle of a lake. And it's got like what you would think of as a European style castle on top of it. In Nagano, Japan, I found a castle in a lake with a star fort base. But it was more like an oriental structure that we would think of like a pagoda but everything else was the same mm. <laughs> you know um artificial island star fort base and you know again there's different stories attributed to how they they got there but where the narrative really falls apart apart is that they're trying to overlay a modern version of how things came into existence that doesn't make any sense with what we're told humanity was capable of technology wise and everything else. I mean, it just, it just doesn't make any sense. And then they, you know, they have a story for everything builders and years and that kind of thing, but it's not, it, it just doesn't make sense. And when you start looking at the narrative, that's what pops out. And so my, my work started along tracking these cities and places and alignments and the history came out and the people behind it came out and so i kind of went down a whole new 
road of timeline issues and looking at how they appear to have inserted a new timeline over the existing infrastructure. And then we're educated in that constantly from cradle to grave in books and our school classes and movies. You know, that's what they want us to believe. And, and so again, the example of they live and putting the glasses on and seeing the word obey and then taking them off and it shows something else. I mean, it's been a, it's not been a good situation for humanity. So, you know, I'm grateful that for everybody that's doing this work to start bringing back the missing pieces of the puzzle and trying to put them together in a way that makes sense. Um, but for me, the, the, these alignments have really yielded a lot of information. And I, I feel really comfortable that it's definitely a real thing, but the grid's been around for a long time, but it used to be used for the greatest good and the highest need. And then the controllers... So you're looking at like the the layouts of, of cities and how they were built. And I mean, this ties into geomancy as well, I, yeah. I suppose, where, it where you're looking, geomancy. it's it's sigils, it's all kinds of things in the in the structures of, of the how the streets have been laid out and what direction things point and 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 that now you've linked that very intimately with with the trees. Yes. And that's but but be, before you were talking about the grid structure as more of a powering system, right? That that was in place that got knocked out in one of the recent cataclysms. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, and I, I, my personal opinion is that there was a major attack on the grid lines and that was, it just went through simultaneously. And that explains the weirdness in the environment and how buildings, you know, they, they're uneven. So, and this isn't just in one place, this is all over the earth where, you know, the, the road goes like that and the building, you know, the windows start small up here and get big down here, you know, that kind of thing. But Wouldn't you attribute that to like mud flood and then later paving over right. because the ground level has now ris risen and it's easier just to pave over it than to try and excavate and remove all that material? Exactly. And yeah. and my belief is that there was a massive event that caused that yeah. simultaneously. Um, but as far as what happened so this original grid system which was to benefit everything used you know you hear about um you know we were bigger you ha you have um vegetables and things like that that are huge and you still have some of that but that this used to be it was enhancing agricultural yields and things like that and then yeah, I when, think even in the mainstream, they talk about much higher concentrations of oxygen, like when they dip into amber and they pull out, uh, you know, they've got bubbles in the amber. There's very high concentrations of oxygen, which leads to gigantism as well. If you increase pressure and you have more oxygen. And then when this happened, you know, it seems like evil found a way to crash the party and came in and they reverse engineered the grid system to become a control system. And so they've been using it for their benefit, but hiding it from the rest of us. So somebody knows about it and they're benefiting from it, but not the way that it was originally set up. So it, it was turned for good and now it's used for control or has been. And, and hopefully we're turning the corner back and going in the other direction, but that's kind of where we are at the moment. So Chad, what have you found about the underground stuff? Uh, yeah, so as you were saying, linking to the golf courses and 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 so, so much, but you know, there's two. My channel covers a, a wide variety of things, and one of those topics is like MK Ultra mind control. And which hugely links on to the trafficking of people um, of all types. So everything is is interlinking in, in some way. So you know, we we could we we can suggest that 
because I've spoke to people, you know, I've spoke, I've got people that come to me anonymously and don't want to be known. And they talk about these underground bases. And when I look on the map, they're close to particular things that me and you have spoke about, but they're used for a whole variety of reasons. There's a lot more, there's, there's so much going on under there that we we're, we're unaware of, but, um, linking to humanity, the control of it, the manipulation, humans, and just everything, you know, so um, I do put a lot of the roots down to the the, the roots, um, the underground in relation to natural organisms, and that can be trees mainly. Obviously, I believe in the root system and the mycorrhizal of a giant network of trees, and that would be make a huge underground network. With that said, we do know that there's there's, there's um, organisms of other types. So you know how things are looking like eyes, for example, and all these different organisms of, of, of giant means. So different places look like different things, but as a general matter, the trees are huge. The trees are, are, are connected to it naturally, you know, but um, as, as Mike showed, there are other things. It's not um there's there's a lot of different organism it seems that have lay on top of that um if, if you like so um and not only have they just had to add on to you michelle that they've took this grid system or the awareness of us the, the truth of reality away from us they've took our power away haven't they as well so everything spiritual if you like in a sense they they just tried to manipulate to, to sever that connection you know, the realm's important, but so are we. We're like trees ourselves or beacons ourselves. And we're at, it seems like everything they've done is to sever that connection, to make you lose belief in, in it, that that's even there, you know. Um, and I feel, yeah, I feel that's important. Finding something within yourself to find something externally. Maybe you can do it the other way, each way. But for me, it was finding something within myself, reconnecting, pure, uh, um, getting rid of the waste, if you like, like an alchemical process. And when that took place, it seemed that the connection with the outside was made through, through myself, like I became a transmitter uh, and connected to the grid itself. So it's two-tone, you know. Not only are the elites doing what they do, and that's a problem, we need to take some control back ourselves for me. And that might be different to everyone else. But if we can take that little bit of, you know, control back from external influence, we we can connect and we can do great things by doing that. And maybe the Internet is facilitating that reconnection. Um, which is a, definitely a very good thing. Mike, I just wanted to compliment you on the work that I saw that you did on unveiling the Titan. Um, I didn't get to see the whole series. I just got to see the first couple of videos, but I'm just really impressed with your style and attention to detail and, you know, showing the whole, the head of the mammoth and the nose and the, you know, how the different holes corresponded. And then I so saw he's going in the eye and the way the cave system looked on the inside. And I'm like, I've seen that. <laughs> You know, um, I watch uh, for a long time. I I watched like drone videos of different places just to get a feel for it, and and that Jeff definitely came to mind. So you know that the idea that that's inside of an organism makes a lot of sense, and not this last interview that I did with Chad, but. Um, the one prior that we did with Adam, um, at the very beginning, I, I was talking some more about the giant trees and the, the the logging and the mining that I found along an alignment that I tracked. It was a long distance alignment um, in both directions, across one way across Europe, the other way across North America. It just and then anyway, I found something at every data point that I looked at related to this subject of mining and minerals and that kind of mm -hmm. thing. And then I looked at it from the perspective of 
trees having been there. <laughs> like it went through the California motherlode country where the, you know, the big gold rush was. And then looking at the history of the giant trees there and, you know, mm -hmm. most of them are mm -hmm. gone. And so that helped me. But I also, on this same alignment, passed right through Thunder Bay in Ontario and there's a sleeping giant provincial park there. And so it brings to mind the whole idea that maybe when the ancients were working with organic material, it you know wasn't just the trees, you know, that there was a, a giant there. It wasn't just a random thing. Now, I would think that with this cataclysm, there's certainly plenty of titans around that just got you know frozen in place or whatever happened i'm just guessing there but there's also a possibility i think that they were strategically placed somehow what do you mean by that but so so like i said i found the sleeping giant provincial park on this alignment that i was tracking hmm. um that, that I was looking at minerals and mineral occurrences and mining and things like that. And then, you, you know, you've got amethysts and things like that. At this particular location, they have amethyst mines. And I know um, in the original video that I saw of Chad's, he was, he was talking about the giant trees, but he was also talking about titans and, you know, amethyst geodes, the gigantic ones looking like lungs. And I worked in a, a crystal shop in Sedona for about a year and a half. And um, this was back in 2016, 2017 to like 2018. And I noticed that geodes look like brains. <laughs> you know? And if you have a slice of like malachite, it looks like, you know, a slice from a CAT scan, a slice yeah. of the brain from, from a CAT scan. You know, so the idea that these are petrified organs does definitely make a lot of sense because that's what they look like. And have you seen any of my videos on that subject, on the petrified organ subject? No. I've done probably 20 or 30. <laughs> um, it's it's a huge subject. And and I I coined, well, I didn't coin the term, but I, I appropriated the term biogeology. It's a term that's used to uh, describe the interactions between plant life here and the lithosphere or something. But I thought this is a great term to, to as a placeholder for the time being, because my understanding is that much of what we've been taught about the basics of geology and petrogenesis, which is the origin of stone, is completely wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. And and so geology is, com it, it doesn't miss the idea that biology leads to geology because that's a, the official story. But it they're talking about hundreds of millions of years and they're talking about plant and animal life dying off in large numbers during cataclysms and creating these layers and then those layers get another new layers on top and that's our sedimentary layering and then the more pressure from above the hotter things get and the more they start to transmute and and melt and then that's what gives us our metamorphic rock and then as that gets pushed further and further down and closer to the earth's core it starts to heat so much that it it literally melts and becomes You've got your magma, and then that ejects as lava. And that's that's what they call the cycle of petrogenesis. And then we know that the most fertile areas in the world are, are where the lava is, is flowing because it's so rich in all of these minerals. And, and that's where your tropical zones are. And they're also volcanic, so it's a little dangerous to live there. But boy, is the food good. And the trees seem to grow like crazy. And, and the leaves are really big, you know. It, and, and so I... I started using the term biogeology. <clears throat> I mean, most people are familiar with the concept of mud fossils in this community because of Mud Fossil University and Roger Spur and his work over the last several years on that topic. But I, I felt, I, I think mud fossils is a part of what we're seeing 
but it's not good as an umbrella term because it's disingenuous. It misleads people and it confuses them. It's it's good for a subset of of geological finds, which are that that originally some form of flesh got encased in mud, mud flood. <laughs> You know, when I learned when I learned about mud flood, I was learning about star forts, mud flood, uh, Tartaria, World's Fairs, all these things at the same time. And they all just started to like weave together in a tapestry. And the mud fossil theory made sense with certain things. But then on other things, it just didn't make sense. But the, the basic idea being that when something's encased in mud, the, the minerals work their way into that fleshy whatever it was and the gas and, and the, the moisture works its way out. And that's the official story for petrification also. It's called paramineralization. And that's what they tell us a petrified tree is, but, but, but that it's happened over hundreds of millions of years. So, so his input for me that was valuable was the idea that this can happen very quickly, you know, in a blink of an eye, uh, nothing like the geological timeframes that we were given. But I, I think the term biogeology is way better because this covers instant petrification, through plasma, electricity, volcanic. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the, the work of Wise Up and his channel, but he's talking about, you know, the basically the infusion of ash from massive volcanic volcanic uh, eruptions, infusing with floodwaters, which would be mineral, mineral rich waters. So you get that combination of salty water and volcanic ash guess what? That infuses into things and, and they petrify. And he's got many, many, many examples on his channel of, you know, this, this megalithic site, it looks, it looks like they carved these stones to make it look like a boat. No, it was a boat. And that wood is now stone. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, but when you're talking about the lines and, and the mining and everything, you know, if you come back to this root understanding, root <laughs> again, that the trees are, are very much a real thing that you can go out and touch. Um, I started focusing on on those over the last year because the evidence was so compelling. And the work that I've done, it, if there was, you know, five other channels that had been doing deep examinations of other Titans and showing all of these anatomical correlations like I've done with Mont Go here, then then it might start to be an easier sell but it's like this is the only one that somebody's done this on you know there's there's another channel called uh tyson's mud fossil adventures and he's you know like this with roger spur and they're talking about creatures that are the the size of continents almost like thousand mile long dragons that's a pretty hard thing for for most mainstream thinkers to even begin to to buy like how does a thousand mile dragon live on a 24,000 mile circumference ball? If it is that, <laughs> you know, it doesn't make any sense. And uh, so most people are just like, oh, the mud fossil thing, that's a little, that's a little interesting, you know, but he starts talking about these Titanic creatures. Well, this to me is like a fractal level down. This is a three mile long creature that I, uh, I believe petrified. And it didn't petrify through some kind of a mud fossil process because it's right by the, the coastline. And that would mean that that the, the, the earth would have had to have covered this mountain, which is 753 meters tall, completely for a long time in order for it to paramineralize. So his his theory is interesting, and I think it applies to some things, but but biogeology works much better as an as an umbrella because there's all of these examples. Of things petrifying very very quickly there was a um a video by thunderbolts project a guy named mungo jep called instant fossilization and he was looking at some of these different anomalous finds in the geological record of concretions of, of different creatures that should have been long ago eaten by the bacteria and the larvae and everything but they're they're pet like there's there's a fish that's petrified with another fish inside that it's digesting. So, you know, clearly you're not talking about some really lengthy process. Jellyfish that have petrified, that we're told that's not possible, that soft tissue petrifies like that because it's going to get eaten up long before it would ever, it would ever fossilize. So the, um, but anyway, Mungo Jeff was talking about these tree stumps that had been, uh, you know, they cut down these trees and they were in a line and a high tension 
power line went down and, and crossed these tree stumps with the current still flowing. It didn't cut out. And it was there flowing for something like six hours. And it turned all of these stumps to stone, but not just the stumps, the entire root structures. So, you know, we really need to rethink the formation of geology and petrogenesis entirely. And that's why I think geology doesn't work as a placeholder term anymore, because that's a gatekeeping term. And, and it's filled with all of these narratives that, that mislead us from what should be obvious truths because they're empirical. And if you just have the eyes to see it, it's like, well, yeah, if you look at hangman's footage, it's clearly a tree unless you're in some state of denial, in my opinion, but we're talking about a tree that was many miles wide at the base and who knows how far up into the heavens it's stretched. And, uh, it's to me it's one of the most fantastic truths that's out there it's absolutely <laughs> phenomenal to to ponder and exciting and, and i agree with you mike i mean i think the truth's in the middle um that it's not all one or the other and and that hmm. that that thinking helped me to really grasp what Tra chad was showing me right away that and understanding the earth's grid system so so we looked at the cotton tree in freetown and sierra leone back in march and it was in the center of the city's grid and it, it just you know grew from my awareness of it just grew from there and then that tree was felled so, supposedly during a storm just a couple of months after that so it it succumbed to whatever forces are at work right now but um you know the truce out there in wrapped up in all of this stuff that we're talking about um it's not all one thing or the other and from my perspective i just see this beautiful worldwide integrated civilization with the same architecture infrastructure all over the earth and that's my driving force and then when i saw chad's um Your, the the video that first video that you made was it mother earth giant trees yeah i saw that and then when chad was following his guidance he was finding the quarries he was finding clay pits and these other things and those are things that i was finding following my alignments and and then there's a whole other there's asylums and there's all other kinds of things that are popping up and train tracks and so <laughs> forth and that leads down another dark trail orphan trains and yeah. <laughs> yes baby baby incubators <laughs> well they they have it's these really weird <laughs> they have these train lines going to these asylums and then where are they taking these people kind of thing cemeteries or whatever but um, Chad I wanted you to talk a little bit about what you were seeing in terms of the anatomy of the earth with the veins and the things that connect back into that like the earth is a living being well yeah it's like it's like what mike was touching on earlier about the gold and everything coming from the trees which we've spoke about michelle but and also mike i saw in your last video that really cool artwork of the heart uh with the trees at the top i thought that was just really really cool um but that's how we've got to picture it. And it, it, it's it's mumbo jumbo to it to a degree. It's micro macro. It's all working on different levels. It, it's it's you know, it's quite weird in a way because you've got so much going on. You've got the anatomy of the human, but but then the humans very much like a tree, you know. You people do compare, say, what I'm speaking about in terms of the root system to the same network in the brain. And it's no, it's not that different. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? So we've got the meridians and the the the, the, the all the systems within within our own body. Um which when we look at the key points and we were to link that in terms of uh, to the earth, it would it would obviously indicate that there are key spots which which have more energy if you like or more potency more power more importance although everything's important but that's just the human body you know so like for me it's working on some weird 
macro micro level where we have to consider something much larger than us and we're quite small to even grasp our head around it and i think that's why i've been able to to, to come to it quite easily because of my joy and love for movies and knowing there was truth in there all my life so you know it's it for me it's, it's quite easy it, it, but I was talking to Tara about this. And for me, there are key points upon the earth, key points, they call them chakras, meridians, you call it what you like. And something else might, I feel they separate us with all, a lot of this. You've got people arguing about mud floods versus giant trees. Why not come together? It is a bit of both. You know, it's just more division. You are right in terms of a more umbrella. And that's the same with MK Ultra and all that kind of stuff. I was struggling. I didn't know what to name it because you're like, wow, where do I put it? You know, people's got this stereotype of that, and it's not really that, but it is. So, um, right, I think, you, <laughs> yeah, that's it, mate. So, I think you're doing great things with what you, you're saying in terms of this umbrella. And if 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 you can push that, yeah, I've said several times in my videos, I think the answer is very often e all of the above, and people get wrapped up in their their pet theory, and mm -hmm. then they push that and they try and apply it to everything. And then they get into conflict with people who don't agree. And then it just creates these factions and people start arguing amongst themselves. And so I've, I've always been a fan of, um, well, it's a, it was a new term for me just in the last few years, but syncretism, you know, this looking at where are the overlaps. And I, I used to um, be a big fan of uh, Joseph Campbell and his work when it came to cross-cultural analysis of mythology and, and, I, I just love that that you could take all of these different subject matters, whether it was religion or, or mythology or history, and 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 you know there are there are going to be these nodal points where everything is is converging, and that is where your truth is likely to lie. And and so as soon as people get extreme, and you know are pushing for one thing, I, I you know absolutism is always wrong. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a joke, but. You know, I mean, that, that's the thing is, um, you know, you were talking about some some work you've been doing on on site in the UK. I'm curious to hear about that. Um, but I was a I was a big fan of Paul Cook's work for for a while. I was an early subscriber of his, and I know you um, you promoted his work a lot as well, Michelle. Um, and uh, he was finding these sites that were absolutely amazing in, in the UK. And he had a lot of bravery to go down and go into places. I, I wouldn't, I mean, I've done some spelunking here, you know, with uh, Mont Go and whatnot. And there were times where I'm like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> Why am I here? And he mm. went into some stuff, some places that look like they're straight out of horror movies, you know, and, and, and brought back footage. And I was like, this, this is awesome. Um, but he had his pet theories when it came to, uh, the golden layer and things that he was finding in, in his interpretation of those things. And I was trying to get him to see things from another perspective, because while I was on board with everything that he had shown and a lot of his ideas I thought were compelling, when he started to talk about the sandstone layer, I had, I had examined so much of Hangman's footage from the, the U.S., North America primarily, um, where he was looking at the exact same thing. But these weren't, it wasn't carved into. Now there were, you know, in like, what is it? Mesa Verde or something, these, mm -hmm. you know, these cliff dwellings and everything. There are areas that are carved into, but it was very different from what you're seeing in Kimber and these these places and, you know, around the UK that that he was getting a lot of footage from. And, and my, as soon as I saw it, I was like, what he was saying, you know, he's saying these are geopolymer. I'm like, that's not geopolymer. It can't be geopolymer. That's, that's formed naturally. And not only is it formed naturally, it's not formed naturally in the mainstream model, which he was saying, he's like, there's no mollusks, there's no shells, there's nothing in here. The official story is bunk. If they're, if, if, if what they were telling us about how this formed had any truth to it, then I should be able to look at it with a microscope and I should find all these microscopic things. He wasn't finding any of that. And so his conclusion was it had to be man-made and it had to be geopolymer. And I'm like, no, there's a much better, more exciting, more beautiful explanation for what you're finding. And I, I kept trying to get him to see it. And it led to a major schism 
because uh, he wouldn't look at it. He wouldn't he wouldn't examine the 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 footage. He, I, I kept trying to point him to different things. And he's like he had so many videos and he was so invested in his own self-created created narrative. And it got kind of more and more outlandish because then he started invoking these giant 3D printing machines that must have existed once upon a time in order to explain these these unlikely swirls and these concentric rings that were existing in the sandstone. Whereas if you just considered that, hey, what you're looking at here was biologically formed, it grew, and this is the remains of tree, very likely they carved into it while it was still soft. And then through either the flooding and some process of you know, petrification, it became sandstone. And it's a, it's a far better theory that intertwines with everything. And he fought it tooth and nail to the point where we had a major public falling out because he started slandering me and all. I, I don't I, I'm not I don't want to dig up stuff on him. I'm just saying that that's an example of somebody's locked in their their theory and they don't want to consider that they might be wrong about aspects of it because I wasn't I was on board with much of what he was saying, but that one thing was very, very important to me because I felt like this is one of the most, what the footage he was showing is one of the most important puzzle bits out there when it comes to understanding our realm. And he was misleading his entire following about his, with his conclusions about that. Um, so that was really unfortunate. We are, we no longer have, we're not on, I had to make a video about it. It was, we're, we're not on speaking terms at all, but um, anyway, you, you look like you had something you want to say about that. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, I live, you said you've been to Sedona before, right? Mine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I'm surrounded by red sandstone. Hmm. Ancient. I mean, this isn't, it's an ancient place. This whole place is ancient. It's so <laughs> spectacular. <laughs> but, you know, again, I, I would have been there um, myself until having this experience of re recognizing now, now that I'm surrounded by my giant tree stumps and on the other side of the mountain from what i where i live now in jerome and i don't know if you had the chance to see jerome um yeah i did some google image searching and i kind of little little bit of tilting with google earth so it's got everything there there's there's it's called the black hills there are pyramids there there's a big one that has a j on it they like to do that in arizona they have a pyramid they put in this towns let surrounding towns initial on it and there's a massive history of mining there copper mining but others as well so right next to the pyramid is a big open pit mine and then as i said in the video with chad this place has all kinds of tree names and and tree references but you, you it's so desert looking you can't you don't think of trees when you think of this place so i want to give that as an example of something where i'm like all about this was man-made so i inter i understand that hmm. and i'm going to show you well, some other yeah. i'm going to show you show you some other examples here in a moment but with the grasping or intuitive understanding of these giant trees i could see where that was originally a tree that was terraformed and others around that area and i think that's what happened i think they they terraformed um a lot of these places that were giant trees and it wasn't done by the controllers that came in it was done by the original civilization that set up the whole system but i want to show you um some things that i i did pull up in um anticipation of this and what is um i was following an alignment that actually started in san francisco and at this point i'm heading across the sahara and algeria into mauritania which is a very interesting location and when i was doing the research for this i I came upon, is that Soita? Yeah, I don't know how they pronounce it. Ceuta. 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 So it's actually a British, 
it's an autonomous city of Spain in North Africa. And wow, on, never heard of it. On the other side of the Strait of Gibraltar is is Gibraltar. And Chad and I had pulled that up as an example. Because, yeah, you mentioned there was a tunnel going across under the water to Africa in one of the videos. I had no idea that was there. That was that was fascinating. It's got a tree look to it, doesn't it? It definitely has a tree look to it. <laughs> and it's also got a shaped shoreline here. You know, right. you know, again, that's that's a signature of the original civilization. And then this had been like a major location for the expeditionary forces of the allies during World War II. And then Chad brought up the more about the tunnels. Um so you know, definitely looks like a tree stump. But I was thinking about this in, in the co context of Titans because of Mount Moses. Hmm. Looking <laughs> like a woman. Mm -hmm. But then yeah, at see, this is this is one it, as soon as I see something like this, I'm I'm immediately am like, is it pareidolia? Right. Because <laughs> that, that could also be that could also be tree. Exactly. And, and if, if it was a, it, this is this is where I'm I'm frustrated with the community as a whole because the, the, there's so much lazy research, things are claimed without any vetting. There should be caves up there, you know, for eye sockets. There should be there should be something. Is it all one kind of stone? If it's all one kind of stone, that does that doesn't make sense to me either because, like, we got a nose, we got ears, we got eyeballs. You know, these are all different kinds of tissue. Plus, there's bone in there. There's muscle. Why would it all be one kind of stone, right? So, yeah, it it could well be a titan. I'm I'm not saying it's not, but I. I <laughs> it has a nickname of of like the sleeping lady or something like that. Yeah. So you can you know can see that, but after seeing that differently, <laughs> yeah, it's like I see a tree stump there too. Yeah. And but this is one of those areas that um, it's actually part of Morocco, but it's claimed by Spain, and it's also speculated to be the southern pillar of Hercules. So if 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 that's a tree stump, um, then that could very well be what we're looking at here. Hmm. Um, you can type in uh, Calpe, C-A-L-P-E, and do an image search. Image search for that. That's about a half an hour south of me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see the one in the upper yeah. right. <laughs> yep. Yep. Yeah. That's crazy. Um, and so you've got the that looks like this in Malta that this type of wall uh, described as a line of fortifications and the story the you know Portuguese built this in the 1540s, which is fairly typical. Um, but I want to go down here a little bit into what it looks like in Mauritania, um, because when you look at the Sahara in general, but this area in particular. You know, and how devastated it is here, and this just looks like it's just sliding downhill. And then there's the eye of the Sahara. Right. There's a lot of speculation around that. What's um, your thought? <laughs> you know, um, I think Atlantis was all over the Earth, so that this was the original Atlantis. I'm I'm at a place where I think. The civil this civilization this ancient civilization was the Atlantean, mm -hmm. and that it existed up until relatively recently are the conclusions that I'm coming to. Right. But, but and when I look at this, it just looks like it's flowing down. Um, yeah. Downhill. Yeah. That, that, that's definitely the one thing you can hundred percent say in it yeah. that it's flowing down. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But well, but and it's. No, no, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I was just going to say the giant trees break down to certain parts of the trees break down to sand, sandstone, and then sandstone breaks down to sand. So if there was a massive uh, cataclysm destroying the trees, you know that could also explain the the Sahara, all the sand there. 
uh, but clearly you've got some massive flow. And I know a lot of people think that that's probably where Atlantis was, but there's also the idea that there was a continent in the Atlantic that sunk and that the tips, the Azor islands are the, the remains of, of that. We've got that island um, the, of Friesland that was not far from Iceland that's no longer there, but that's on a lot of old maps and it was almost the size of Iceland. So there's been some major upheaval and major cataclysmic change and you can see it right there. Right. That's also very close to Roger's 1000 mile dragon. Yeah, uh, it's to the right of that. And mm -hmm. that's interesting because going back to the pillars of Hercules, he's he was he was talking in one of his videos about one of the Greek writers, the I don't think it was Plato, it was somebody else um, talking about the battle between the Leviathan and the behemoth taking place there. And that, um, you know, these are these great creatures that were doing a battle just south of the pillars of Hercules. So that that was some of the stuff that he was presenting that it made me go. OK, well, you know, this is I was also looking to Earth shape a lot at the time and like, what what are we living on and what is the form of it <laughs> and uh, how big is it and is, is it flat and does it extend outward and, you know, all these kinds of questions and thousand mile long dragons don't make sense on a ball, but they do on a on a flatter, much larger realm. Um, and are you familiar with the works of Martin Kenny and his his cosmic egg? um uh, presentations he, no he, no i've he heard of the cosmic that, egg yeah that the well there's the cosmic egg which is you know the ancients their um depiction of our realm is is it's an orb and we're on the inside and we're on a flat surface within within the orb um but he was presenting the idea that that this realm is expanding and that like tree rings and that there's growth rings out you know i know you're you're talking about the fall of Lemuria in, in some of your videos. And, and he was, he was saying that Lemuria, um, that we are in Atlantis. He was in alignment with what you were, you were just saying the whole realm was Atlantis. And then beyond that was Lemuria. And beyond that was what was the other ancient, uh, civilization. Um, there was Lemuria, Mu, and then there was, can't remember the name of it now. And he was theorizing that, that our, our sun moon binary system that that's actually repeated in in with with venus and mars in an outer ring and then jupiter and saturn in a ring beyond that and who knows if there's any truth to it but i thought it was a fascinating thing but at the center of it all was the world tree and we've got all the old maps with rupus negra and and the four continent system at the north with the you know these these ancient maps so it's a it's fascinating to ponder all these things what were you going to say about, about it? I was just going to say about the, the the old maps, you know, the ancient Buddhist maps. They're showing the rings and the uh, the islands beyond the different rings. I think it's a two thousand year old Buddhist map, isn't it? That very interesting. Yeah, story, if you can you believe know. it, it's it's but definitely it, 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 this is it. Yeah, <laughs> but what I feel what you what you're edging on a lot of the time, what you're saying, Mike, is you know, it's it's when you become definitive when you're unsure, and it, the best way to stay. A lot of the time it's being open minded, you know, um, staying open minded and um, always it's like a humbleness, isn't it? You know, it's a humbleness to that. I could find something that's different to what I believe now. And as long as you're willing to to accept that, I think you'll you'll move. OK, <laughs> it's that's it's the opposite, isn't it? It's like the stubbornness to not accept anything that's outside of your. Your framework and and I feel all three of us are quite well at doing that. Uh, Michelle, give the prime example. I was going to even mention that Michelle, <laughs> how you just, you know, yeah, she just oozes humility. It's disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's it's just you know, I, I think we all, we all want to find the truth, you know, and the people that are hungry for information just want to be able to understand the whole thing. You know, and, and we all have working theories as to what we're looking at, you know, and that's the unfortunate part of truth having been removed from the realm because we're just left with fragments to try to put together and see what fits. But I just wanted to share this is uh, Natal, uh, just n near Natal in Brazil. And I found this location tracking and alignment. And there's dunes by the beach 
And I've long believed that there's something underneath the dunes, you know, enduring infrastructure. Um, but this was on a grid line. And then another one that just came to my attention, like on my one of my feeds somewhere is on the other side in Namibia is the Namib Desert, which is right next to the water also. And this was also, um, I don't know if the grid line goes right through here, but there is one that goes through Namibia. Namibia. And the Germans were extremely interested in Namibia um, for colonization. Um, hmm. There was some early genocide that went on here about 30, 30 plus years from um, World War II. So they came into this area uh, and it's just, you know, I, to, I look at deserts completely differently now because I think, again, I think this cataclysm just went through the grid system, created desert swamps and the land mass just fell off into the ocean in certain places. Um, like what we're told historically about the continent of Atlantis. And then the interest that these different countries have in Antarctica, Antarctica and the Antarctic region. There's something going on down there because of their interest in it. But some research that I'm, I'm working on now um, took me to an interesting location in Ethiopia. You know, and again, seeing these things as giant trees, uh, this is the Simeon Mountains in Ethiopia. Okay, this isn't far from the Great Rift Valley and Yemen and Djibouti. Uh, so Djibouti is kind of a, a strange country with a lot of volcanism. I don't know if I can find a good example, just looking it up here. Um, but there's quite a bit of volcanism in Djibouti, which is, is kind of in that area that's showing here between um, Ethiopia and Yemen. So the Simeon Mountains are over here somewhere. And we've been looking at Yemen for the giant trees. Um, there's a volcano there that The Daman Hot, that looks like a tree stump. No. Um, it's that tree stump looking volcano. Okay. okay. Uh, the I mean, one that's got like a concentric ring in it? Like like this one. No, that's not it. Like that though, isn't it? Kind of like that. But it's like have that. You the, have you heard the geyser theory also? Yeah, yeah, I've, I've watched that on the... your channel. Uh, that was good. That's good. There I like it is. That. Yeah, the, I think there's truth to that as well because yeah. not all of that looks volcanic or tree. And you know, if you think of the waters of the deep, and you know, they're basically coming up during the Great Flood. It wasn't just coming raining down from above, according to the old literature. Um, in the movie. Uh about noah the one who was it russell crowe didn't he play noah yeah he did yeah um there's a scene in there as the flood is beginning and all of a sudden these massive like mile wide geysers just shoot up out of the just randomly out of the the ground so i think there's some truth in plain sight in that movie so the the one i'm looking for really looks like a tree trunk and and that's in this area. And then there's a number of examples of cities that seem to be built on top of tree trunks in Yemen. Hmm. And, and in, in your last video also, I think uh, Chad showed the the old drawings of pyramids on top of tree trunks in Egypt. Okay. There's several of those drawings. So it's not just one. That's fascinating as well. So that's it's almost it. like they're capping a, a tree or harnessing the maybe the um that's it the artesian <laughs> the artesian wells which are the the arteries of the tree that the waters are still flowing all these old cities the star forts the star citadels 
they all seem to be in these locations where there's just this never ending flow of water. So, hmm, maybe, maybe that's why they built there because even though the tree has been cut down, there's still, there's still life and, and flow to be had from it. And of mm -hmm. course, all of the mining and the, the tunnels as well. So this is the one I was looking for, the Hammam Dopt. Stupid, isn't it? And it's it just cool, cooling lava. <laughs> yeah. That's the yeah. official story on this stuff. I know. Just Especially, you know, the, 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 um, the hexagonal columns. But, Mike, there's something to this, you know. This, our community needs to come together as well, and I think they already are, but there's the people on the ground, and then there's some people that might be a little bit more like myself, uh, a different approach to it, the, the, the approach of understanding. And we need to come from both angles, because when you look at some of these places, come on, no one saw it for a long time, so there's something missing. You know, and I know we've started to click on a little bit and wake up, but it's two-tone. It takes both to come together, doesn't it? You know, on the ground is great, and it, it, it it's just as important, but the, the understanding in as well, the awareness of it. You could show people all day, maybe on the physical mm. side, but if there's no understanding and awareness, maybe they won't take. And the same on the awareness, if they've got no physical proof, maybe they won't, you know what I'm saying? So... Everyone's as important as each other in, in the communities. And that one, that one looks so tree. Yeah. Can I, can I show something with uh, Google Earth? Yeah. yeah just, a, just one, one quick second. Sure. Um, so I was going here to show you um, what I see as tree stumps now. Um, where I live is filled with these, um, you know, mesas or whatever with the the thing on the top. Um, they're all over where I live. And so this is in Mauritania. This is in Greenland. This is at the Thule Air Force Base, Greenland. So if there's a um, energy function, it's right next to it, the Air Force Base. Um, this is Kutimbo in Peru, which is fam famous for cholpas uh, up at the top. And then where I live in Sedona, that's a picture that I took. And, you know, like I said, these things are a dime a dozen where I live. So whereas before, I would look at that as a man-made structure because, you know, that was my my framework. I, you know, not knowing how they did it, but it wasn't what we've been told. Um, mm -hmm. But now, you know, the the giant tree explanation it makes makes a lot of sense to me that that's what these were which also begs the question like when you see the ones that are jagged and spiky and pointed and everything you can imagine a tree just getting yeah. snapped and it's going to leave all of the these things jutting upward and you know with even in the mainstream model with comet strikes or you know whatever these you know uh tidal waves tsunamis that were thousands of feet tall could take something out, out like that but what are your theories on on the flat tops so chad found that wonderful image of um exploding volcanoes all at one time the ring of fire yeah, where it just, you know, it, it was, you said it was an agnostic alchemy kind of thing. I'm going to stop sharing. No. Guys, you know that one in Greenland? Can't you just, you know, that path that she had then? It, you can't, you can just imagine, can't you, the tree on top and that little path and us walking up like ants. Yep. It's just, it's just, that's why I like to create because I've just made that there. That's a great image for it. Perfect. And then you 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 know you have when the in Greenland. I'm not sure what you're referring so, to. So I was talking. Uh, let me share it real quick. Um, so that's this one here. This is, like, is like, ah yeah. This is you see how it's like about the path. <laughs> it's like it's like <laughs> almost. It just it's just it's just quite easy to imagine, isn't it? That that line that that runs down it. 
If, if you just leave that on, on screen for a second, I just sure. want to talk about because I made a video called Felling Titanic Trees, touching on the, these different theories that are related. Because if the, if it was a tree, you know, it, it suggests that somebody cut it down. So how did that happen? Was it some kind of a laser? Was it some supernatural power? Was it God? Was it, you know, and I, I just presented the idea that if this was a great tree, you could you could cut it down with a with a diamond rope saw. It would just take you a while. You just need two pulley systems and and a diamond rope. And it just little by little could cut down a tree. So I I'm not suggesting that's what happened. I just wanted people to broaden their perspective and understand that even with steampunk technology and a tree that's miles wide, if you had a long enough rope and a pulley system and you had some time. You could take that thing down and make it a flat top. You don't need to invoke some kind of alien technology or, or, or super powerful lasers. One of my subscribers presented a, a theory that the high mineral content waters from the deep rose up during the great flood. And that caused the bottom of the tree to die. And then as the bottom died and petrified, then eventually at, at some point the top would have fallen off and decayed and decomposed. I thought that was a an interesting thought. <laughs> Very interesting. But to answer your question, I mean, like something like this, you know, doesn't have the volcano feel to me. You know, whereas I think a lot of trees did lose their tops when the volcanoes blew. Um, this is something different because <laughs> it doesn't feel like that it's you know like i i've saw you've covered it as well mike i've mentioned it in um michelle and we have you know the the poor is it paul bunyan the american giant lumberjack guy um a, a titan <laughs> <laughs> you know so <laughs> you, if you look around there are there are things to, to kind of go hang on a minute you know, there's the flat top. There's there's yeah. We've so. got we've got Jack and the Beanstalk also, <laughs> right? There's all these there's all these mythological tales of giant beings cutting down giant things. This is it. But to speak to what you were just talking about, Mike. Um, so this is Ladder Hill, in Saint on the island of Saint Helena, where Napoleon was exiled to interesting history for this little place which is a british overseas protectorate um jamestown is the city and historically there was an incline railway here which was made to go away sometime in the 19th century and they replaced it with a lot of steps okay so this was an incline railway which are interesting when you get to funicula, funiculi, funicula. <laughs> so when you get to the top of Ladder Hill, you're at Ladder Hill Fort in Half Tree Hollow. <laughs> and we talked about this in our last conversation. St. Helena. So you know when you were talking about that, it's like, okay, well. Something like that had an incline railway. It's called Half Tree Hollow. And the incline railway themselves are cable driven most of the, most for the most part. Some of them are. Some of them might I think they're incline railway. Um it's two cable cars counterbalanced to go up and down so you know you're using of the word cable brought that to mind and these things in are Itali amazing in italian it's funicula yes interchangeably it's funicular or uh incline railway or cable car um tramway it's another one so these used to be everywhere there's a few left but not many and they were at the tops of places like that. Um, Pittsburgh still has two, but they used to have a lot more. 
and there's it so goes... many UK, Michelle. There's a lot in the UK still. Burning there's one in probably. Barcelona. Mm -hmm. So these these are going to the top of flat top places. So to me, that's an example of something that was engineered that way somehow. And I, I think the uh, the name of incline plane has a clue in there. I mean, when I when I first started doing this, I did not have a um, an opinion about the shape of the Earth, and I definitely do now. Uh, it's not what they tell us. And so these incline railways, incline planes. Earth plane, airplane, I mean, I think there's information in there. And so how they did that, I, I don't know. But something like that to me speaks of it being man-made, where as a volcano, so like a man-made, you know, it used to be a giant tree and it was repurposed by the good guys. And the volcanoes were giant trees that, lost their their top i'll present another way of thinking of it um have, have either of you gone into the work of uh ben from waking up with analog i have you know not. who he is mm -mm. i saw you were recently on the, the higher side chats he's been on there a couple times in the last few months and he's a close friend of mine he's an incredible researcher and what he's been doing for the last decade is going through all of the the newspaper articles the the archives from the late 1800s early 1900s like systematically city by city and reading all of these articles and the the work that he's done is phenomenal he's he's um he's just showing that the whole historical narrative that we've been given and grown up with was completely different a hundred years ago. And they were talking about so many different things, very, very matter of factly. And one of one of the areas of research that he's touched on the most has to do with radium and, and you know the, the radioactive element of radium, which was used for all kinds of different technologies and for healing and all sorts of things. And and then there was a point and the 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 Nazis during World War II were very interested in in this. They had kind of cornered the the reserves, the world's reserves on this particular element, um, and you're talking about things like uranium and plutonium. These are these are elements that are found in the trees, along with gold, along with silver, along with everything. The trees were making it all, and it was all being mined. And he's got all kinds of old articles. Like I'll, I'll sometime. If, if we do another one of these talks in the not too distant future, we can kind of prepare beforehand and, and talk about decide what we want to discuss specifically. But I, I can bring up a lot of these articles that he's, he's um, presented showing that they were that there were petrified forests all over the place in North America. Like we have a petrified forest now that people can go to from a tourist perspective. But they were harvesting these petrified forests that were still standing. They were upright. They, they, it wasn't paramineralized. These these are trees that are filled with copper and gold and silver. And they were taking them down and they were harvesting them. They were getting they were getting fifty like a hundred years ago. They were getting fifteen thousand dollars worth of silver to the ton from these these trees. That's that's hundred that's money from a hundred years ago. Fifteen. That, I, who knows how many millions that would be in today's money, right? Per ton. Uh, so that all got removed. And who knows, you know, if these trees were a real thing, where's the rest of the tree? That's the common question. Are they shipped off realm to outer outer places? Have they been used to build our realm? It's hard to know. But he he's presented so much valuable information on this subject and radium is a key and and i've talked a lot about the well j dreamers in his channel he's talked a lot about the plasma apocalypse that there's some kind of an event that's that's taken place that took out the trees that petrified a whole lot of stuff 
and leads to petrified titans and petrified organs and, and whatnot. And what is this? And I've got all kinds of theories that I've touched on on my channel that have to do with volcanism, but also the trees themselves may have been hit. And when they were hit, those elements that were in the trees may have transmuted. And the reason some are, are, are now volcanoes is that whatever that particular type of tree was and whatever it was growing and making as it, as it grew, those particular elements were very reactive. And so when the cataclysm hit, it started to create this, this perpetual fire that's down there smoldering and periodically comes upward. And, and so rather than seeing them as having been blown from outside, if you think of us as inside of an enclosure and you've got, you've got the, you know, like a Tesla ball where you can touch it and the, the uh, you know, all the electricity goes to where you touch some kind of a major plasma storm hitting these trees could have destroyed the upper portions and, and basically created this, this molten smoldering eternal fire yeah. down below so it yeah. didn't have to be from within out it could very very plausibly be from outside in and that could be technology it could be a natural you know archaics i don't know if you've gone into his channel at all he's talking about the phoenix event which is basically synonymous with jay dreamers plasma apocalypse which is synonymous with chris jo chris austin lambert's uh emco event which he called the electromagnetic plasma changeover event <laughs> He's, you know, yeah. I think they're all talking about the same thing, which is shit got hit. <laughs> and, and that, and that's what I'm, that's where I am now too. You know, something. And that would have definitely blown happened. out the grid, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so all, all I'm seeing is this, this, whatever happened wasn't that long ago, because we're still using the infrastructure of the original civilization, and so. Um, you know, like we were t talking earlier, I mean, we're, we're going to kind of get to these nodal points of truth and at least present information that's been removed from public awareness to try to get it back out to people that know, you know, so many now know that, that they've been lied to. And I, I tend not to talk to this about this subject to people that I know because they're not ready for it. Mm -hmm. It's just I'm not in. I'm not going to try to force what I believe onto somebody else if it if it would just completely rock their world, and and that's my family. <laughs> you know, I can't really talk to them about it because that's not where they are. But you know, with the internet, people just when they're ready for it, you know, they grab gravitate towards um, finding what works and what resonates and. Um, and so it's, you know, I think it's been a major part of our awakening. I know, I mean, I know it has been hmm. to be able to put out our own information and, you know, what we're passionate about and motivated to research. And then, you know, as people realize I mean, maybe what the mainstream media is saying isn't right, or, you know, there's all these kind of, especially this year, but it's been happening for a long time. So many things that are happening as we speak. Um, the Category 5 hurricane that hit Acapulco within the last day or two that pretty much destroyed it. It's just nuts. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it's just been within That's the first last time couple of days. In history, recorded history, that a hurricane has made landfall on, on from the Pacific side. And and it's a Category 5. Yeah. That, it's a lot of people crying weather wars. Yeah. Out of nowhere. <laughs> Out of nowhere, full, and and full. and the media doesn't seem to be talking about it much. Apparently, there's it's kind of like a blackout in the mainstream media on on what should be an inc the biggest story going right now. So that's an odd thing. Why would why would they not want to talk about that? Yeah. Al weird. Alternative media, but yeah. Before we flash over, guys, just about the image that Michelle pulled up myself. I don't believe I make any kind of factual remarks, which is just a deeper conversation regarding deeper thoughts. What you were saying about the 
the plasma i've done i've gone into all of that too mike and it is very plausible itself you know so um and it, it could explain high pressure and different things like that you know um high energy and pressure and heat and all of that different type of things as well so bringing everything in i think it's the right thing to do you know that image that michelle pulled up with the treetops it looked like with the fire going out i think ultimately the best thing to take from that is it kind of proves an underground system it kind of proves that that was potentially hitting some weight internally or right externally all we can really take from it is the fire it's showing fire and it's showing the tunneling that's all that we can take so i think together as we were doing bringing all different things in it makes more sense you know and it, it's keeping that open mindedness i do think the the what you just spoke about is 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 definitely has to be taken in consideration but then at the same time, Mike, if you notice, the impot pot community or whatever it's called won't consider anything else. So again, we're at this divide and conquer kind of standpoint where which which community? I didn't catch the word. Um, the electromagnetic plasma community, you know, ah. the, M the impot community. It's kind of again the the one 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 route, and there's not room for other things to come in. So again, hmm. you know, it's like. I feel I'm very much like what you are and Michelle is we're taking aspects of a lot of things and bringing it together to make more sense as a, almost like a huge umbrella because there's components of so much, but those certain communities don't want to accept other components when it should be accepted. You know, it's a, uh, it's a funny one. So uh, lava, you mentioned lava or, um, tunnels and I, we haven't even touched on lava tubes also yeah. those are really fascinating and and that because you don't have you have the roots which could be hollowed out by mining but then you mm -hmm. also have the channels that the trees themselves are using to transport water and i've got a, a live stream that i did called spelunking titanic trees because I, I went in and i was looking at a lot of the footage from a, a channel called the action adventure twins these guys they're not into the alternative anything from what I can tell. They're just going down in these deep cavernous places and diving down 500 feet and then walking through winding channels and then going down another three or four or 500 feet and doing it again. And it's just mind boggling what, they, what they're presenting as far as the footage. And when you have the eyes to see it, you, you understand they're in the inside of, of these trees. Those spaces were not hollowed out by some mythical um water erosion over hundreds of millions of years because a lot of the sides of the caves are totally rough and you know craggly so there's no erosion that's happened there those channels were there and it makes no sense that they would have formed based on what we know of of the the mainstream petrogenesis model but if you think of it as something that grew that had to had to supply the the upper branches with waters from the deep it makes absolute perfect sense. And, and so I think that's what a lot of lava, lava tubes are, are those channels. And it doesn't make any sense otherwise. Like, why is lava pushing against something hard going to create these perfect smooth channels, all kind of roughly about the same size? So lava tubes, that's another enigma. I've got videos on, on the marble caves, looking at salt mines. All of it just screams tree when you when you see it. And you and you look at it with new eyes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can I can I show something real quick that I'm yes, going to show yes, you? Yes, yes, please. Know we can, it's I you guys it's enabled. Wrap this up. It's enabled. Let me see here. I just have to. Um, this there was a video you you've probably seen it um, by uh, Mr. MB three 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 I believe is what his name is, um, and he did this five minute video. Whoops, there it goes. Um, looking at Madagascar. Have you have you seen these the, the stumps on Madagascar? No, but I'm I, I I haven't been. Not yet. Okay. I've been looking so, around there, <laughs> but not specifically Madagascar. Okay, so let's see. I wanted to use my measuring tool. I, I don't have to measure, but this is roughly eight miles in diameter here, and and if you um, get in on it. You're 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 showing your notes and your PowerPoint. Oh, that's supposed to be screen 
<laughs> one. Okay, I'm showing the wrong screen. Hold on. Stop sharing. It's... Every one of those points, we could have a conversation. Like, you <laughs> yeah, could spend each, an hour talking each, on each point. Each one of those. I that's part of the presentation <laughs> I gave yesterday to a group. Um, and those are the last, like the last ten slides. I couldn't even mention. I just showed them to them. Like this is, this is, um, this is what I, I would would talk about if I had another ten hours. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I had to. Okay, let me try sharing again. Wait, where is it? What the heck? All right, share screen. I'll just share the the, the app itself. There we go. All right. So uh, now there you, you can see it, right? Yeah. So, I mean, first of all, if you just look inside compared to the uh, area around, very fertile, which if that was a tree stump and there was, you know, some some channels there that are still tapping into that old water, that would make sense. Um, and then and then if you start to look at it with with the, the tilt function, you know, you can rotate around and you can see it, it's it's really sticking up. Um, and over here where I've got the tab, the tag boom. If you zoom in here, you can see that it's incredibly detailed, um, except it's not filling in. Oh, there we go. It just took a long time. So you can see these are basalt columns, mm -hmm. but but this is this is tree grain. It's so clearly tree grain. And then you can see like here, this is very rich in iron, um, mm -hmm. and it. To me, it's just so obvious that that's a, a tree stump, but hey, it might be pareidolia. And then, and then it's like, okay, that's a volcano, um, or some some former volcano. But here's one, here's one, there's one. They're Where all kind of like they're all kind of around the same size, isn't that? It's almost like a forest. <laughs> yeah. So where is that? Yeah. that no, that's Madagascar. This is, this is in Madagascar. But you can find these all all over um, all over the place. And just for people, maybe if you post this on your channel who um, who haven't seen my work, I can just show real quick what we were talking about before. We didn't really go into it all, but with um, with the mountain. So I'm I'm on this point here that that juts out. So you were talking about the Strait of Gibraltar before. I live right there at that point, and. Interestingly enough, uh, I mentioned in our email, the, the prime meridian goes right through there. And that was one of the lines that you were tracking. Um, so it goes right through Denya. And Denya is here. And this is a star citadel. Um, this, this is where the ferries go across to Ibiza. And there you can see the, the, um, the walled city or the walled fort. It's an amazing one to 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 uh, visit, and then this is Mont Go here. This is the this side of the, this side has has collapsed according to mainstream geology, but we're looking at the head and the body, and here you can see what appear to be the the remains of of uh, ribs, and then. Right here, interestingly enough, this is closed off now. In the first three, four videos that I made about this mountain, this wasn't like this before. This is all blocked now. After I made three or four videos, all of a sudden Google Earth changed. And now you have to get in right up next to it, and then it opens up. But if you want the big picture and you want to zoom away, as soon as you do that, it, it closes back up. So it's really kind of suspicious but here you can see the remains this is the third video that you haven't seen yet kind of looks like a like an ear went, once went there and it's in the perfect place like the eyes here there's a curve here which is the cutout where the head would meet the shoulder and and this curve here is on both sides of the mountain it's there as well so um just from a macro perspective on my first examination of the mountain with, with Google Earth, which used to look very different than it does now. I made in the fifth video, I show the befores and afters because I was using Google Earth as a drone and I was coming in very, very slowly from a distance. And I was filming that with the screen capture so that I could get 
all of these different angles and, and zooming in and show people that it's it's if it's pareidolia, it's the most advanced form of pareidolia ever because because it's not just one angle, it's not shadows. There's all kinds of macro features, and that was before I ever went into the eye. And the third video is about the ear. Right there is a cave that opens up, and it's uh, I didn't even know it existed until I started the research. And that cave at the time that it was excavated by a team of of archaeologists and geologists was the most uh, thoroughly excavated cave in all of Europe at the time that they did that work. And so my the opening of my videos shows uh, there's a little there's like a little the th the the fourth video has the 90 second version of my opener, which is basically an encapsulation of all the research that I did on the mountain uh, in those first four videos crammed into 90 seconds visually. And, um, and you can see the, their footage. They went in with LIDAR into this cave, they 3D mapped it, and they went in with 3D uh, cameras as well. So they have 3D fly-throughs. So it's pretty extensive examination of that cave for some odd reason. Um, and now you can't, can't even see it unless you get up really close. So anyway, I just wanted to share that as a teaser uh, for for people if you are going to show that on your channel you, at some can point. You, um, can you share again and go back to the star fort that you showed us? Oh, yeah, that was one other and, thing I was going to show you. I forgot. And I just want to you know just say that your work on unveiling a Titan is is excellent and with your your scientific background and your anatomy and you know cell structure um very well done thank you and you can actually see um, the eye <laughs> so so what chad yeah. and i were talking about in our last conversation is that it sure looks like these places were built on top of tree stumps like the, the mm. star fort yeah and yeah. it's it's clearer from some views than others but like that view you know they were they were using that energy somehow yeah and then if if you sh i'll show you over here there's a canyon uh that goes through and um what the heck Punta de Mata. oh no sorry that was the wrong road i'm like the quarry is gone <laughs> <laughs> there's a big limestone quarry here. Um, there's a golf course. So you got a star fort, a quarry, a golf course, a titan, and a potential <laughs> tree candidate. <laughs> all all in this little area right here. Um, so there's, there's let's say, a golf. That'll so, keep you busy for a while. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Lots of, lots of coincidences. This one, this might be another potential titan but there's no you know i said the caves are key if you really want to prove something when i went into mont go there were there's between 15 and 20 different specific anatomical features just in the eye of mont go inside the eye its location the placement the internal eye structure which is the video you saw but the fifth video uh, there were additional discoveries that were made, and I present those in the fifth video that's also about the eye, and that's just unbelievable. It's phenomenal. There's there's a, there's a cave, and then there are caves within the cave, <laughs> and those caves are, are are very interestingly placed. But this, this to me, from above, looking at it, I, I don't know what it is, but it, it almost looks like that could have been a spine or something there, but... You know that might just be pareidolia so you can't just jump off the the deep end with everything this one here also they're mining so getting back to mining real briefly i and and um my friend ben from waking up with analog he's totally on board with this they're clearly mining the titans they're mining the titan trees and they're mining probably titans as well petrified titans and um so what did this whole area look like before they started to to break it up maybe it looked a bit like that over there you know it's hard to hard to know 
<laughs> Avatar, isn't it, guys? It's Avatar. <laughs> it's literally, you know, it's just, it's so it's hard to imagine, but just go to stuff like that if you want to, and, and it's there. <laughs> We build it. We we literally built. If you look on the maps, we built our towns and cities around these things to go and harvest them. You can see them literally built around these things. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So we're Great just work, scr- mate. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Fantastic. Yeah, we've just scratched the surface. I've done multiple. Yeah. I've done two, three, four hour live streams just t- talking on different aspects of of the things that we've talked about today. Mm. Because there's so much to cover, and and it's very visual. We've just been primarily talking about these things and touching on them with words. But when you when you understand that there is incredibly compelling footage on the ground of this stuff, again, go to Hangman One One Two Eight's channel and watch ten hours of footage, and you'll know. If you have doubts, you'll know that the trees were a thing. But a lot of people just can't put in the time and and. Um, he's you know i'm very methodical in the way i do it and i'm super analytical and i'm pulling out anatomy books and i'm doing all these things he's he's um he's there on the ground and he's looking at this stuff and he has a very christian perspective and so for him this is just confirmation that the the bible is truth and um so that that's his his angle on it uh very often when he's talking about things and so that can turn people off as well um because a lot of people are just like, oh, you know, here, here we go, a Bible believer. And, and they, they'll they throw out the baby with the bathwater instead of looking at what he's actually presenting. And he's very methodical in what he what he's done. he's done. And he shows all the different manifestations. He shows the sap and how the sap manifests when it petrifies. The volcanoes, um, obsidian very, very clearly comes from the tree. And you can find it in the different stages of petrification. So it vitrifies. It goes from tree into melt. And if you've ever seen one of those Fresnel's lenses, with the, it's a giant magnifying glass, essentially. Yep. And have you seen them? You've seen them melt. It starts to melt stone in seconds, right? So if you think of a dome <laughs> over our earth and, you know, some kind of powerful force coming in and the dome acting as a concentration for, you know, a lens, it, it could hit one of those trees and just completely turn it to glass. So... That's what vitrification is, right? It's glassification. So the the tree, sand, how do we make glass? We melt sand, right? So sandstone becomes obsidian. (laughs) He shows all the different stages of the development of of these things on site. And you just, you know, you can deny it if you you don't want to see it. But it's pretty straightforward, I think. I just want to say real quick, I mean, that brings in a whole nother subject of lighthouses, which has Fresnel lenses. And I believe they were involved in what happened. That they were missing. Yeah, I heard your I heard some of your theories about that. And I <laughs> I, I I was like, yeah, that's one that's definitely one one plausibility. <laughs> and then I started thinking about, you know, you, you were talking about Avatar, but like um Black Panther, the movie where you've got this highly advanced civilization with vibranium. Right, that that uh, is this sought after element that they can do magical stuff with. There's uranium, right? And they have these, they have this force field that makes them unvis- invisible until they decide to reveal themselves to the rest of the world. And so that was something I was thinking also is that they might have been part of a protective grid as well, and that could have been uh, reverse engineered to you know to destroy as well as protect. Yeah, they, I mean, they took down a lot of white lighthouses, and if there's a Fresno lens around, it's probably in a museum, and some mm-hmm. weird stories around them, too, like one in North Carolina that they gave the the lens to a contractor <laughs> after it had been at the World's Fair, and the contractor just, you know, sold bits and pieces of it, and then the museum people who wanted to preserve it were like we're we're going to go get these pieces but just a weird story around it is my point Hmm. um you know they weren't trying to preserve these lenses there may still some be some around but not like there used to be 
Yeah, and there might have been other tech that's been removed, just like when you see the top of these church steeples and they've got that space in there. You know, we know that they've removed the the mercury filled balls from the, the the you know what some people call antiqua tech in the, in the top of these cathedrals. Those are no longer there, but you can see them in the old pictures. Um, so what was what was really in the lighthouse besides just the lens, and what was up at the top of these these spires? Have you seen the diagram of um, them basically using the Fresnel's lens to to burn ships out at sea? Mm -hmm. so so it's like a, it's a defensive tool as well because they're they're capturing the sunlight and they can they can direct it and project it like like we would laser weapons now so that's pretty interesting stuff <laughs> a lot to pull back from the ether it's been great talking with you two and so thanks for the invitation yeah, Mike. it's been fun i really glad, appreciate uh, it i'm glad we were able to connect and uh <laughs> Yeah, well, thank you for the invitation as well. <laughs> well, obviously, we, uh, we could talk for hours. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> well, let's do it again sometime in the not too distant future, and we can maybe have more of a game plan lined up so there's a little more structure. It was fun to just, just touch on lots of different ideas and see where the conversation goes. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy with it. <laughs> Thanks. And thank you, Chad. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Amazing. Mike, you're wonderful, mate. It's just glad to have you part of the part of the team now. Almost, it feels like you know I can bounce things to you, maybe, and there can definitely be more in the future. We just need to shine, don't we? All of us do our own thing, but at the same time, connect and share that love and compassion that we bang on about what the trees would be doing. You know that network and that connection. So, hmm. the tree team. <laughs> <laughs> Team tree. That's better. I like that. I like the same. Way. Team tree. Right on. Yes. Well, till next time. Till next Thanks, time. Guys. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you.